in this video we're going to go over our kins, our kins and also our kins, also understanding them and their nomenclature, how to name them. So we are going to start and I'll put our kins here where we are going to have them and let me put our kins here and our kins. Now all these we've listed here are hydrocarbons, meaning they only contain a carbon and an hydrogen. Now, when we look at the protein number for carbon, carbon has got six electrons. That is telling us, if we write the electron configuration, it is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Therefore, we know that the p orbital to be completely filled up, it needs six electrons, so we have got Two elect four electrons which have not filled up this orbital. So for it to be completely filled up we need four more electrons. And in our cans, our cans can react with four different atoms. And so we call it a saturated hydrocarbon. Why? Because all those orbitals which remain not filled up are going to be filled up. You can you can no longer add anything else. Now when we come to alkenes, there is at least a double bond between two carbon atoms. So that means this carbon has now two electrons that it is sharing that side. So it now only needs two more different atoms for it to be stable. So this atom which will come to bring an electron, even this one, there is also another electron there, another electron there, so four electrons which are needed to fill up the orbital that has got a deficit. Also this one is going to take up two more electrons like that. So we see that for the minimum number of carbons that we need for to form an alkene is two. You can't have an alkene of one carbon. So when it comes to alkenes, we have got a triple bond, at least a triple bond in the molecule and so since we already have three electrons here on this carbon we only need one other atom to react with an alkene so only one atom is going to be attached there and only one atom attached there now when we look at this carbon which is here it is bonded to four different things and whenever a carbon or an atom has to be bonded to two four other different things it always undergoes sp3 hybridization so we have got 1s and 3p is making us, giving us four orbitals, which are hybrid orbitals. So we are going to have four hybrid orbitals where even different hydrogens can come and react. Now because this carbon which is here is only reacting with three electron domains or three different things. One here, two here, a double bond is going to be taken also as one electron domain. So it undergoes sp2 hybridization because of only three things 1s and 2p's giving us the three th orbitals which are hybrid orbitals now for our key ones we can see it only reacts so one carbon only reacts with two different things so we are going to consider this as one electron domain and this as one electron domain well electron domain is simply the number of atoms or lone pairs of electrons which are around a certain atom in a same in a same volume so it shouldn't be a different volume or space or the different occupation so if we talk of triple bonds they are having the same occupation that's so we're going to count it as one electron domain and so because carbon is only reacting with two things it undergoes sp hybridization all right so this is one thing that we also need to get to understand Apart from this, we need to understand the presentation. How, how do we get to present these substances? Well, before we get to understand that, let's understand their formulas. Our cans have got a general formula of Cn H2n plus 2. While for our kins, the general formula is just Cn H2n. Well, for our kins, I'm going to put the general formula later for that one. Now let's look at first the simplest alkene that we have. The simplest alkene that we can have is when you've got only one carbon. 
when you've got one carbon that is going to be C1 but we will not show a 1 and then H so if we get to put a 1 they are going to have a 4 so CH4 this is going to be the simplest alkene but for us to get the simplest alkene it shouldn't be one carbon the minimum we can have is two carbons so therefore the simplest is C2H4 well when it comes to these which are here to understand also well their general formula we can just get to have a compound where we've got an alkene with four carbons so that is going to be let me just put the carbons we face a single bond each so because these are kings we should have a minimum of three bonds somewhere so we are going to have like that and now this one can only be bonded to one hydrogen this carbon which is here is already stable it doesn't need any other hydrogen okay because it already has four bonds there and then the other carbon which follows it only has two bonds so it needs two more other atoms so it is going to have two hydrogens and then the last carbon needs three hydrogens to be stable so how many carbons we have here we have got four carbons what of the hydrogens we've got one two three four five six hydrogens okay so that is C4H6. And how do we get this this one which we have here? So the general formula for our kins is going to be Cn H 2N minus 2. So if this is a 4, this is going to be 2 times 4, that is 8 minus 2. That is the one which gives us now 6. So that is the general formula. Well now let's get to understanding them better. First step how do we get to present these substances? So if we get to start with just our cans, we can present them in so different ways. The first one is using the general formula. So we already know the general formula of all our cans, that is Okay, that is Cn H 2N plus 2. So, now the next thing that we need to know is the molecular formula. So, for the molecular formula, we are just trying to show the actual number of atoms which are reacting. For example, an alkane of 4 carbons is going to be C4 H 10. There it is. So this is the molecular formula. Now, apart from the molecular formula, we ask, we also have... Okay, when we get to just simplify this, to get the simplest number of atoms which are reacting to form this, carb with, uh, this hydrocarbon which we have at this point, and what number can go in 2, 4 and in 2, in 2, 10? That is without giving us any remainder what can we say there so that is going to be a 2 so we're going to have a formula c2 h5 so the simplest formula when we divide by a number that can go into this two without getting a remainder that is called an empirical formula in a case where we're talking about and now can with five carbons C five H if we put a five here to be ten plus that will be a twelve. There's no any other number that can go into five and twelve without leaving a remainder apart from one. Therefore the empirical formula for that one will still be itself. Okay, like that. So I've got the molecular formula and also the empirical formula. Now we have got different representations of these compounds which we have here. We can represent them in so many ways. And one way that we can represent them is using a skeletal formula. 
Now, before I get to go to that one, we can also have the structure formula. So here I've written the molecular formula, empirical formula. What are the structural formula? So structural formula just talks about the same atoms that you have now. You are writing them. We've got four carbons. I'm using this one with four carbons. So C bonded to C, another C, another C. We are supposed to have 10 hydrogens. So when we see such a representation, this is a structural formula for the alkene with four carbons. Now, apart from the structural formula, we can also represent just this compound in another way. We can also use a skeletal formula. Now, when you're talking about the skeletal formula, we don't show any hydrogens. All we are going to be showing is the number of carbons which are in this compound. So in this case, for this one, we have got four carbons. So I'll put the first one there. So all we'll be doing is taking a zigzag. So this will be the first carbon, second carbon there, third carbon, fourth carbon. So this is the skeletal formula of an alkane with four carbons. We also have the condensed formula. So I can just remove what is on top here. So for a condensed formula, what we are getting is we are going to get first, a first carbon. We look at how many hydrogens is it reacting with. So the first carbon is reacting with three hydrogens. We'll write it like that. We put a dash. The second carbon we can see is only reacting with two hydrogens. We'll put a dash. The third carbon is reacting with two hydrogens. And then the last carbon is reacting with three hydrogens. So this is a condensed formula. We can also write it as CH3, CH2, CH2, and then CH3 without putting dashes there. So that is another representation that we can use when we are writing that compound. So apart from using a condensed formula and this we've looked at, we can also use a Lewis structure. Now the Lewis structure simply shows the number of electrons which have participated in this bond. So if we consider this very compound we are talking about here, its Lewis structure would be we have got a carbon like that. So we only have one bond here as we can see. So one bond has two electrons. These are the two electrons we can see there. And then the next carbon, there will be two electrons. The next carbon, two electrons. The next carbon. So these are the bonds which you are seeing at these points. And then we are going to have also two electrons now and hydrogens attached there. And then there are two electrons here and a hydrogen is attached. This, there are two electrons here also and hydrogen is attached. Even at this point and hydrogen attached. Even at this point and hydrogen attached. Continually like that. So whenever we see a single bond, it's only two electrons which are involved in that bond. So that is the Lewis structure. And the last one we are going to talk about here is a Kekule structure. Now for this one, you are simply going to show lines. Just this one, we've already even seen it. So we'll simply show the lines showing bonds instead of as showing the electrons. If we have got a compound, let's say we have got an alkene, an alkene C2H4. So for this one, we have got one carbon, 
which has got two electrons like that. Okay, let me first just write it like carbon, another carbon there. And then each is bonded to, this one is going to be bonded to two hydrogens. This one is also going to be bonded to two hydrogen like that. But because this is an alken, alkene, we can see at this point that carbon only has the three bonds. But carbon is supposed to have four bonds. So that's why we put another bond there. So this structure we are saying here is what we call a Kekule structure. So a Lewis structure will show the, the electrons, but this one will present the compound in terms of atoms. Now that you've gotten to understand all of this, how do we get to, to name these compounds? We need to know that just the naming of these compounds also there are some there's some kind of isomerism. So these compounds can form isomers. So isomerism is, in this case, we're going to be talking about structural isomerism because we have got different forms, structural, optical, and also stereo. In this case, we're talking about structural isomerism, where you have got different structures but the same molecular formula. So that is what you are going to describe isomerism or they are different bonds but same atoms. For example, when you have got a carbon atom with, I mean an alkane with four, four carbons. This is a general formula of an alkane with four carbons. But this general formula doesn't tell us the arrangement of atoms in this molecule. Because just this same one, we can have atoms arranged in a linear fashion like that and then we are going to simply have hydrogen around and we can also have instead of having this group attached at the end we can come and attach it at this point. So what I'll do is I'll remove this hydrogen. It's the one that I'm going to attach there. And then this portion is the one that I'm going to go and attach at that point. So how is it going to look like? So I'm going to have carbon, carbon, another carbon. But the fourth carbon I'm going to attach it here. But this carbon has got three hydrogens. And also this one has got three hydrogens. Even this one has got only one hydrogen because there are already three bonds. So the fourth one is going to be that one. And then the other one is also going to have three hydrogens. Like that. So these, they've got the same number of atoms, but the arrangement of the atoms or the bonds are different. So they are called isomers of each other. Now just from here, what we can see is we have got also different levels at which the carbons are. We have got some are primary carbons, some are secondary carbons, and some are tertiary carbons. So if you want to state whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, even some which can be quaternary, you look at how many groups have been attached to them other than hydrogen. So if we consider this first carbon which is here, how many groups are there? Remove the hydrogens. Don't consider the hydrogens. So we can see this group here. Okay. So because it only has one group, so this is a primary carbon. And we use one with a zero on top like that. Now if we look at this carbon here, how many groups are attached to it other than hydrogen? So you can see this and also this side. There are the two of them. So this is a secondary carbon. We are going to use two, the zero on top. This one here has got only one group because the rest are hydrogens. So this is also primary. Now when you have got a carbon which has got, let's say only one hydrogen there, and then there's another group here. It can be anything, another group here, and also another group here. We can see we have got three different groups. So such is going to be called if this with only one group is primary, two groups is secondary, this is a tertiary carbon. Now when we've got carbon where all the groups are different, all of them are not hydrogens. Are different just from hydrogen. This is going to be called 
a quaternary carbon. So that is how we can classify those carbons if we've been asked to classify them. So now to get to name all these compounds we are talking about, we need to understand that when we've got one carbon in a substance, so I'll, I'll state the number of carbons here and also the prefix that we use. So when we have got one carbon, the prefix that is going to come in front of the name, the name that is going to come in front of the parent name, that will be meth. If we've got two carbons, that is going to be F. If there are three carbons, that will be prop. If there are four carbons, that is going to be but. If there are five ca carbons, that is going to be pent. Six carbons, that is going to be hex. Seven carbons, that is going to be hept. Eight carbons, that is going to be oct. Nine carbons, that is going to be non. And ten carbons, that is going to be dec. So these are supposed to be within us even as we get to name alkenes, alkenes, and also just others. So when you've got an alkene, I'm going to be using skeletal diagrams or even the condensed form so that we don't take up much space. If we have got this alkene, how many carbons does it have? So just count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four. So we have got four carbons. So this is going to be called but, But because it is an alkene, there's no double bond. There is no triple bond. It will be butane. When you have got one, where we have got, let's count these. How many carbons are here? One, two, three, four, and five. So because there are five carbons, the prefix, the name that will come in front will be pent. But because it is an alkane, we'll get the last three letters from alkane and put them there so that will be pentan. Now if this was like this, and then we have got a double bond, it is no longer an alkane, but an, al an alkene because there's a double bond. And for an alkene, we can see it ends in E N E. So just count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four. So this is going to be an alkene with four carbons. That is going to be called but, but not butane. We are going to say butene. But at what position is the double bond? So when we are counting the, the position, we only consider where the double bond is nearest to, the end where it is nearest to. So this will be one. Okay. So we are going to say this is one butene. We can also write it as but. So say we'll start first with the but. And then write the position one and then put the N at the end. So but one N. Now, when we have got something like that and then the double bond is here. So we first need to determine how many carbons are here. So if we start counting from here, it will be one, two, three, four, five. Let's also start counting from the other direction. One, two, three, four, five. So if we start counting from here, we can see that we are meeting the double bond firstly at carbon number what? At carbon number three. So it wouldn't be right naming it from the other direction. Therefore, for us to be able to name this compound, we are going to start from the direction where the double bond is going to be found on a very small number. So this is carbon number one, carbon number two. So you can see that a double bond has been found on carbon number two and you get the number which is lowest and not come and get the number which follows. So we are saying this is at carbon number two. Therefore, to name this compound is going to be called two. But how many carbons are there? One, two, three, four, five. So it is two pent because it's an alkene to be two pentene. Or we can name it as pent 
and then we put a dash we put a position and then another dash we put now the n so that will be pent 2 n what of if it was a triple bond other than a double bond or a single bond let's say we had something like this and we have got like that how do we get to name this one so we are again going to count first the number of carbon atoms 1 2 3 4 5 6 so if we start in this direction going to the right we are finding the triple bond at carbon number 3 what if we start in the other direction we start here as 1 here as 2 here as a 3 we can see that again we are going to find the double bond at carbon number what carbon number 3 so that means for this one it doesn't matter the direction in which you start counting. So to name this, this is going to be three pent okay, this this has six carbons, so it's not pent but hept. So this is going to be three hept. But because it's a triple bond, it's an alkyne, we are going to get the last three letters. That will be heptune. Another way you can name it is just getting the hept and then put the three dash and then you put ion at the end. Now we might not always have a straight chain like that. At times we can have some groups which are getting outside. How do we get to name in such a case? So when we have, let's say we have got something like this and then we have got at this point something like that. So to be able to name this compound, we first need to make a continuous chain of carbons. So if we count carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, we see if we go down that will be 4. So that means this will be a group. But the chain that we get as a longest should always contain a highest number. So let's take it in this direction, 4 and 5. So if we went here, we would have just ended at 4. But as we go in that direction, we see we've ended at 5. So the longest chain has got five carbons. What if we start counting in this direction? One, two, three. So we see this group was to find it at carbon number three. So we can just name it like that. So when naming, we first name this group. Now this group, whenever you see a line like this, this means we only have one carbon at this point. So therefore to name it, a compound with one carbon is called meth. But because it's a group, we call it an alkyl group, we are going to put YL at the end. So that will become methyl. And then the parent name, there are five carbons there. So to name an alkene with five, five carbons, that is what a pentane. Pentane, I'm putting AN here at the end because there's no double bond, there's no triple bond. So all we do is give the location of this group which is at carbon number what carbon number three so that will be in front so that is going to be three methyl pentane so that is going to be the name now what of if we've got something like this we have got a group here and then another group there okay let me put another group there so to be able to name, we always start in the direction that is going to give you the lowest number finding the group. So we can't start counting from this side. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I've got 6 carbons in this case. Now the groups which we have here, we've got this one with only one carbon. And then here we've got one, two carbons as a group. And we know when we've got something with two carbons, that is F. When we've got one carbon, that is meth. So this is meth. And then this is F. So E comes first in the alphabetical order than M. So we're going to name first the ethyl. And we state its position. So that is going to be three ethyl. You always put a dash to separate a number and a letter. And then we put another dash. We state the position of this methyl. That is 2, and then methyl. Now we write the, the name of the, parent sen, of the parent chain with 6 carbons. That is what? That is 
hexen. So in a similar manner, this is how we also get to name our kilns and also our kins when they've got substituents. So let's say we've got something like this and then we have got a group here and then okay we can have something like this let me put a group at this point like that so when we are naming we need to name in the direction that is going to give us the double bond nearest to so this is a double bond here so we can't name starting this side so this is going to be one two three four and five but when you are naming you first start by naming the group which is outside the name the chain so that is a methyl so that is going to be two methyl now what chain is this with five carbons it is an heptane so say sorry not heptane but pentane but because there's a double bond it's not pentane but pentene but notice that also the double bond is not at carbon number one the double bond is at carbon number two so that is going to be two methyl pent two n so that becomes the name and if we have got let's say we've got something like this we've got a double bond there another double bond here, and we've got two bonds double bonds let me also put another one like that so naming we are also going to name in the direction that is going to give us the lowest number on the double bond so start in this direction one two three four five six and seven so we are going to name this as the longest chain has got seven carbons so this is hept but we have got double bonds at position number two we name the first one not this one and then we also have a double bond at carbon number four this is going to be hept two comma four because we have got sorry this is supposed to be a comma when you're separating numbers you use a comma so hept two comma four and then dash because we want to write a letter so we have got something with uh, seven carbons and this these are all double bonds so this is what and now kin but because we have got two double bonds we are going to put die to represent the two and then we put in at the end so that is apt two comma four die in we can also say two comma four heptin die heptin so we can also name it by first mentioning this that is going to be two comma four and then we put a dash because we want to put in a, a letter hept now I'm going to put die and then write the in but it is better we write it in this format what if we've got something like that we've got a triple bond there and then we've got a, a substituent there okay something like that let me put it another one at that point so we are going to count in the direction that is going to give us a lower ranking or a lower numbering of the triple bond so that is going to be one two three four five it doesn't matter whether we go in this direction or in this direction it will still give us six so first we are going to name the groups so we have got two groups there and those are both methyls so we're going to state their positions we've got at position number five comma position number number six okay it's a position number four and position number five now i'm going to put die because they are the same this and this is the same so i'll put a die and then what is the name of a group with only one carbon that is a meth methyl so that is going to be 4,5 dimethyl and then you put now the name of the whole chain a chain has got six carbons that is hex and then we'll state the position where the triple bond is it is at position number what position number two so that will be hex two but this is a triple bond 
is an alkyne, so we'll put ion at the end. That is 4,5 dimethyl hex 2 ion. So that is going to be the name. And basically, this is how we get to name organic compounds for alkenes, alkenes, and also alkenes.